Have you ever seen a manufacturing centre of excellence? Well, on today's Swarth and Chips, we're going to take you on a tour of one. So now we're at HLT, which is part of the Sherline Group, and we're going to have a look round to see what they're doing. Now, first, we're going to talk to Chris, who's laser scribing, and they've actually let me have a go. So they laser scribe this one. So did you see that? That was nice. So, Chris, why do you laser scribe? Um, laser scribing is literally a good way of cutting material. Um, to good consistency, good size. Obviously, profiling can take a lot longer, but that means cutting the whole thing out. Scribing, you can cut a line into a part, and the customer can take the part, as we have here, as a full plate, which then they can obviously draw on top of what they need to do, and then snap the outside edges off and use the components as they go along. So what actually happens once you've snapped them? What do you, what do, you do with them? Obviously, we need to get the right depth of scribe, so we come onto the OGP and we measure the depth of the scribe from top to bottom. Obviously, normally it's like 33%, but on this job they want 60%, so I've had to go a lot, quite a bit deeper. The depth's just good for, obviously, the deeper it is, the less um, shear you'll get on the edge of the plate. That's great, thank you. And we're going to actually move on now to Kev, who stood further down here. So, Kev. Can you tell me what else is going off in here? At the moment, we're doing some um, zirconia panels for um, the oil and gas industry. It fits over an electronic circuit. Um, it's made of zirconia, and it's a very pre precise part. Um, hence the reason we were set up as a, as a business to do precision laser cutting as opposed to normal laser cutting. <laughs> and over here, we have um, a laser marking system um, and at the moment we've got it set up to do um, an in-house logo for you to have a look at. That's great, thank you. And I, I've noticed you've got your apprentice running this. So yeah. how important are apprentices to you? They're very, very important to us. Um, it's a very difficult industry that we're in and we like to take the um, apprentices in so we can give them bespoke training, training on the job so they know exactly what they're doing and they're, obviously they're, they are the future of our business. That's great, thank you. So after this, we're going to move, now move on to the next section. So now we're in the laser cutting department. So we've seen scribing and we've seen engraving. But now on these machines is where they actually cut the material. Now this one behind me is where they cut the ceramics and the plastics. And as Chris is looking inside the machine, you can see that there's still some remnants of plastic and stuff. And then if Chris wants to have a look at the control on this, it looks like I'm launching a space shuttle. But when, they'd, um, when they got an order to then cut steel, this machine wasn't actually quite powerful enough. So now we're going to go and uh, grab Colin, who's down here, and look at this, as this is their newest machine. So, Colin, why did you have to get this machine? We had to get this machine because um, a lot of our customers wanted metal parts and it was a lot thicker so we just had to buy the bigger machine to cut the thicker metal. <laughs> so what are we actually making on here today? It's a nameplate. And that's for the um, packaging industry, yeah, right? right yeah. So how many parts could you cut on this machine at once? Um, pretty much it depends on how big the sheet was. If it was a full size sheet you could cut anything up to 100, 200, 300 parts. So that's two to three hundred parts, and now I know Colin is actually running fifty parts on here in three to five minutes. And let's be honest, you couldn't mill them quicker. So, Colin, what's actually happening in there? What's happening in there is you've got the laser itself and air, which is nitrogen, which is cutting the metal. That's great, and as you can see, just look how fast that cuts material. So now we're in SXL. And as you can tell by the name, this place does not disappoint. Some of these machines are huge, especially this one I'm actually stood in. And as you can tell by my voice, I'm quite excited for this bit. This machine, when it was installed, was one of only three in the subcontract industry. Now, I'm going to have a chat with Tony here about what they're actually making on these machines. So, Tony, what are you doing on them? 
Uh, mainly we specialise in large castings, uh, aluminium, aluminium, magnesium, um, for motorsports and automotive. So, magnesium, that must be a fun one to machine. Yeah, it's... Keep yeah. as much coolant on as possible and don't let it spark. Um, now, this machine is huge, as you can see by the size of it. So, how many tools do you actually have in this machine? Uh, there's 240 in the back there at the moment. 240 loaded, ready to go. 240 tools ready to go in this machine. Now, as you can tell by some of the other machines, they have quite a lot of Matsoras in here. Now, we're going to have a quick look around here because this is a dual power loading system. So, this is quite easy because while one, while one casting is running, they can be setting another one up. So, this machine never stops, which for this place is critical because they have so much work through this machine. My mind's boggled, to be honest. Now, we're actually going to move on now to another place which I think you'll find just as exciting. Now, we've seen the big shop. Now we're into the little version. Now, we're going to actually move around and we're going to jump on a few people to uh, ask what they're doing. So, what are you making on this machine? Uh, we're just making these stainless steel parts here today. And which industry would they be for? Uh, these would be for the medical industry. And if you had to say one thing you like mostly about this machine, what would it be? Uh, probably the space it provides us. See, that's great. So as you can see, it's quite a big working envelope and also the space in the back. So if you've got a U-drill or a big boring bar, there's space to get it in. Now, we're going to move down now and we're actually going to jump onto an apprentice, which I'm a bit scared to. So we're now going to come and see Jack. So what are you actually making on this machine today? I'm making a part out of stainless steel that's used in scientific industry. No, in the scientific industry. Yeah. And what if, if you had to say one thing you like most about this machine, what would it be? It's the fact that it has twin spindles, so I can machine both sides in one operation. Nice. So, so that's all, all laves in here seem to be twin spindle, which is really nice. Now, something that's quite interesting about this place is, have you seen the size? of this CMM table. Now, this is a CNC CMM, which not a lot of people have, but as you can see, it really helps. And having it bang on the shop floor also helps them keep parts in tolerance from each machine because they can check it after each op. Now, you're gonna think we've planted these, but we haven't. We're gonna come to an MTD Pro and it's also got a great name. Now we're gonna talk to Tom. So, Tom, what are you making on this uh, machine? I'm currently making some copper parts for the sensing industry. For the sensing industry? And if you, if you had to pick one thing you like mostly about this machine, what would it be? Uh, pallets. The pallet changer. Now, this is great because you can load all your parts up, press go and forget about it. Now, we're going to move down to the last uh, guy we're going to talk to. And what's great about this, we've got such a long walk and they've left snacks out for us halfway down. And a big happy birthday to Tom for Friday. Yeah. <laughs> now, as you see, this is a great walkway of machines. Now, we've got another section which is all to do with, well, wait and see. And now we're in the fabrications department and we're going to talk to Reese about what happens in here. So, Reese. From start to finish in this building, what actually happens? So basically we start down at laser, everything gets cut to whatever form is needed, moves down to press brake, once press brake gets it, that gets uh, folded uh, into whichever shape is needed for the process. From there, goes down to your engineering assistants, which will orbital, deburr, remove any sharp edges. Uh, once they've finished there, that'll then move on to us, uh, where it'll get welded, uh, pieced together like a, like a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Um, from there, we'll go over, take it to the sanding bays, and we'll clean that up to a finished product, which will then be taken out and taken to uh, stores. We'll send it out. So as you can see, quite a lot happens in this building, and by looking at Reese, he likes a bit of welding. Now, this is such a long process from start to finish and can take a considerable amount of time. So. After this has all been done, we're now going to head to the last place where everything is assembled. 
So I'm now in the assembly department and I'm going to have a chat with Dom about what happens up here. So Dom, what's happening behind us? So we're um, doing some electrical uh, testing and uh, bits and pieces on some parts we make here for a customer. So what, what's involved in electrical testing? Uh, so we do continuity testing, we do also vibration testing on uh, running up the, the actual equipment, powering it up. So once all the testing is done, what happens to it when it's all finished and ready to go? So we pack it in uh, bespoke packaging, send it out to our customers. Um, a lot of the packaging we've got here, they um, decant the packaging, the parts, and send it back to us. So you're very green. Yeah, and um, well, thank you for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. And this packaging looks so nice and comfy, I'm going to ship Chris back to the office in it. See you next week.